Hey guys, once again, welcome to our channel. Hopefully you guys are doing great. In today's lecture, we will be dealing with the concept of biology. Actually, we have introducing biology as well to our channel. And soon we are introducing physics and maths to our channel as well. So, yeah, it will take a time, but we'll be able to accomplish all of this soon. So as you can see just by the video's thumbnail, the concept that we have taken for today's lecture will be organization of the organization, organism. So basically we are dealing with two uh, main important concepts that is specialized animal cells and specialized plant cells So without wasting our precious time, let's get off Okay, now let's look what are the cell structures here. So we have uh, Firstly, we have cytoplasm. What is cytoplasm? Actually, it's found inside the cell It's like a jelly kind of substance that is found inside the cell and it will contain all the other cellular structures Now what type of cellular structures that contain we'll see in the upcoming slide but let's see what are the other contents present in the cytoplasm. The large nucleus, basically the nucleus is also present in the cytoplasm and it's very large and it's surrounded by a nuclear membrane. And that the role of the nuclear membrane is to separate the nucleus from the cytoplasm. The cell membrane actually is the uh, outer layer of the, that protects the contents of the cell, for example, nucleus, mitochondrion, etc. And the cell wall surrounds the cell membrane. It's made up of cellulose and uh, basically it's found in plant cells. The cellulose cell walls are basically found in plant cells. Talking about chloroplasts, now chloroplasts are also found in plant cells since they are requiring, uh, they are required for photosynthesis since what happens uh, in the process of photosynthesis is that the chloroplast will contain the pigment chlorophyll, that chlorophyll absorbs the energy from the sunlight and hence that energy is used to make up the food for the plant. So chloroplasts are organelles that, for, that are found in the cytoplasm that are packed within the pigment chlorophyll and so are green in color. This is the reason that why plants are green in color due to the fact that they are packed with the chlorophyll pigment. One more thing is present uh, that is vacuoles. Now vacuoles these are large vesicles that take up a large part of interior cell, of plant cells. Basically vacuoles um, that are used for storage of food materials or nutrition, nutrition materials that help for plant growth. Let's see the next slide. All right, so we have the structures here uh, of the plant cell and the animal cell. And if you see these under a light microscope, which is quite uh, not that magnified, actually it's of a lower magnification, this light of microscope. If you want for more uh, light microscopes, you can use an electron microscope for much higher magnification. So with the light microscope, you can see the following contents. What happens? Uh, this is an animal cell. Okay, and you can let me just label it. Uh, it's an animal animal cell, and this one is a plant cell. Plant cell. All right. If you see the animal cell, you will notice that what are the contents? The cell membrane. Actually, this is the outer layer of the cell that protects the cell contents in the cell membrane. It's, it's of an irregular shape. You will see animal cell that has an irregular shape and it, it will contain the nucleus and the nucleus is separated from the cytoplasm that is a jelly-like substance. Again, I, again I'm telling you uh, that is separated through the nuclear membrane of the cytoplasm. This is the nuclear membrane. All right. Now, if you see the plant cell, you will see that there are two protective layers that are protecting the contents of the cell present inside the cytoplasm. You will see there's a cell wall that is made up of cellulose only found in plant cells. Okay. And then you have the cell membrane. So there are two protective layers. One is cellulose cell walls and the other one is cell membranes. And inside what is happening, what is present that uh, this is the nuclear, the large nucleus that is separated again from the cytoplasm by the nuclear membrane. You have the chloroplasts and these chloroplasts contain the pigment chlorophyll. So basically these are the pigments of chlorophyll. You can see the green, dark green colors. And uh, this is the permanent vacuole. Again, vacuoles, I'm telling you that vacuoles are used for storage of food materials. Now let's see further what happened in the next slide. Uh, so we have cell structures. So in all cells, what is the most common thing present? What are the most common things or we can say substances that are present? Let's see. So within the cytoplasm, the following organelles are, are visible in almost all cells except prokaryotes. So when you're talking about prokaryotes, um, you don't have these things. Okay, they're the mitochondria and ribosomes. So, and these things are only visible when you're looking at a higher magnification. 
higher magnification means you are using an electron microscope. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is mitochondria. Mitochondria is a singular mitochondrion, and these are organelles that are formed through the cytoplasm. Actually, they are the powerhouse of the cell uh, that generates uh, energy for the cell to work out for uh, the cell to work out function properly. Then we have ribosomes. Actually, these are tiny structures that can be free within the cytoplasm or attached to a system of membranes in the cell known as the endoplasmic reticulum. So we'll be showing you the ribosome structure or how they are arranged in the cell. Okay, it was not present in the previous slide, but we will show you in, uh, in the upcoming slide. So basically, it's uh, arranged in the system, attached to a system of membranes in the cell known as the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, endoplasmic reticulum studied with ribosomes look, looks rough under the microscope. So if you see under the microscope, what happens? These ribosomes actually, they're attached to a system of membranes. Okay. And if you see through a microscope, you will see they will look rough. And that gives rise to the name of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So often shortened to RER. This is the abbreviation. Vesicles, basically vesicles are the same thing as vacuoles, but these are smaller compared to the vacuoles. Okay, and they can also be seen using a higher magnification. These are small circular structures found moving the, throughout, throughout the cytoplasm. Let's see the next slide to um, identify under, an, under a light microscope and an electron microscope the contents present. Okay, so you can see this is an animal cell. So animal cell, this is the picture in a light microscope. So you can see the only content that is present in the nucleus and we have the cytoplasm on the cell membrane. If you see um, through an electron microscope, you will see further contents. What you will see, these are, these are the ribosomes. Now you can see how they are arranged, these membranes, right? It's like a third type on which there are uh, beads. Actually, these are beads are ribosomes. And what is the function of ribosomes? Actually, it's the protein synthesis that we're going to talk about further, maybe in the next um, chapter or in the upcoming slides. Okay, and you can see. We have the mitochondrion. Mitochondrion are the site of aerobic respiration that provides energy for the cell. They are also called the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, so these are the contents that if you, if you look through an electron microscope, you can see uh, these all contents that are mitochondrion and uh, you have ribosomes. Now, if you talk about a plant cell, so plant cell also will show different contents when you when you when you're viewing it under a light microscope and an electron microscope. So under the light microscope, this is a lower magnification. You will see that uh, you have a cell wall, cell membrane, nucleus, chloroplasts, and um, you have a vacuum. But if you see through an electron microscope, you will see you will have further contents. Let's say mitochondrion, ribosomes again, and you have these. These are all ribosomes. Okay, so the mitochondrion and the ribosomes can already be seen at a higher magnification. And that's the point to be concluded. Now, if you see here, Functions of cellular and subcellular structures. What is that? Then we're going to talk about the uh, features of cell, like for example, the substances that are present inside the cell. And we are also going to talk about the structures that are present inside the cell. So let's see what are the functions of those. So uh, let's start with the first one. First structure is in the nucleus. Now, what is the function of the nucleus? Actually, it's containing the genetic material. What is the genetic material? It's the DNA or RNA. Actually, there are strands of DNA or strands of RNA, we can say. Okay, actually deoxyribonucleic acid, that's the full form of that. But we're not talking about that now because we'll stick to the function only. So it contains the genetic material, DNA, in chromosomes. So basically, DNA is present in these chromosomes. There are 26 pairs of chromosomes. And these chromosomes will control how cells grow and work. So you, the only thing you need to understand that um, that nucleus contains the chromosomes and the chromosomes contain the genetic material and these chromosomes Will contain how cells grow and work and will control the cell division actually what happens um, The cell will uh, make replica of themselves they, they will divide divide and make multiple copies of themselves as you get mature as you get as you grow older Okay, so this is the only function of nucleus that you should be aware of now coming to cytoplasm cytoplasm actually it supports the cellular structures for example, we discussed in the previous slide that we have nucleus um, that is separated actually. We have a mitochondrion, ribosomes, uh, let's say chloroplast if it's a plant cell um, and many more things that we discussed in the last slide. And inside of many chemical reactions contains water and many solutes. So you can see that cytoplasm actually it's a mixture of water and many solutes. 
that is dissolved to make jelly like substance that is the cytoplasm so the other function of the cytoplasm now cell membrane what is the cell what is the role, role of the cell membrane that is holds the cell together okay and it will control the substances entering and leaving the cell basically it's type of a guard for the cell now if we talk about the cell wall this is give the cells the extra support and it will define its shape now for example like animal cells animal cells if you see the structure here you will see it's an irregular shape since it doesn't contain the cell wall plant cell contains a cell wall so you can see how regular the shape is it's like a rectangular shape so that's why what that's differentiates the role of the cell wall in uh, plant cells and animal cells now Chloroplasts, site of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis again is the process of making food, providing food for the plants. And you have the chlorophyll pigment that is absorbing the light energy needed for the reaction to occur. The photosynthesis reaction basically. The last thing you're going to talk about is vacuole. Now, what is the role of vacuole? That it contains the cell sap. Okay, cell sap again. Uh, it, like cell sap is basically used for storage of certain materials. And this cell sap is helping to support the shape of the cell. So basically, if you see this, this is the vacuole, and you have this cell sap. This is the outer layer. Okay, that's called the cell sap. This label. So here you have the cell. One second. Cell sap. All right. Let's move on. Function of subcellular structures actually they are present under higher magnification. Okay, so we have mitochondria. Mitochondria, we're talking about the functions out of aerobic respiration, and that respiration provides energy for the cell. Now, cells with higher rates of metabolism, that is carrying out many different cellular reactions, will have significantly higher numbers of mitochondria than cells with lower number of reactions taking place in them. Okay, then we have ribosomes. Ribosomes are actually used for, they are called the production of proteins. They are used for production of proteins. Okay. So protein synthesis means protein production. Now vesicles, small food vacuoles basically, they are used to safely transport substances from one part of the cell to another. For example, uh, let's say the parts are mitochondrion, ribosomes, nucleus, basically we are transporting in between them. These vesicles are used to transport. Okay. And that's how we are done with the um, function of cellular and subcellular structures. In the next video, probably we'll be covering specialized uh, animal cells and plant cells. Actually, this was about uh, the functions of the cellular and subcellular structures. The specialized animal cells and plant cells we'll be discussing in the next video, in the following video. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the like button, comment down below. So as per your suggestions, we can improve the video's content and also uh, let us know in the comments that which concepts are you facing difficulty in. So according to that, we can just clear it out. Alright, that's it for today's video. Cheers.